Okay, uh, Adam Kreutzer here, uh, registered counsellor and mental health coach, and I'm really pleased this morning to be joined by Sean Lane. And uh, Sean is a professional rugby league player currently playing for the NRL club, the Parramatta Eels. And uh, Sean, thanks for making some time to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, good to be here, mate. Um, it's uh, something that I'm thoroughly interested in, mental health with athletes and stuff. So it's good to be here chatting to you today. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, really keen to uh, hear a little bit more about your thoughts on the mental health space. And as I've mentioned to you, uh, looking at doing a whole bunch of different mental health conversations with people, because mm. I think it's really important that, you know, our broader audience get some insights into, you know, really what makes you guys tick, you know, especially those at the professional level. So um, yeah, we'll jump into it. I've just got a, a few questions I'd like to ask you, which I think will be really interesting to explore. No worries. Okay. I mean, the first one is if we just take you back a little bit. Um, I'm certainly interested in a little bit about, you know, where you grew up and, uh, you know, a little bit about your family dynamics and I guess what it was about rugby league that really got you into the space to get you to the level that you're playing now. Yeah. So um, I grew up in the eastern suburbs of Sydney mm -hmm. uh, in a suburb called Matraville. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't have the best upbringing in terms of wealth our family wasn't the, the best off um mm -hmm. but it was still a very healthy very happy upbringing um this is all despite the fact that um the entire time um of my entire life my dad's um, been living with uh depression so uh, mm -hmm. that's one thing one element that's been a, a challenge for my entire family this entire time mm -hmm. um but we've we've all put up with that and he's continued his his battle with with depression the entire time but, mm. um yeah in regards to rugby league it was just something mm. that was kind of uh, never really an option for myself it was just mm. uh what all of the the males in my family did growing up and yep. um it was the same as my two older brothers my my dad was their coach my mum was their manager and it was the same for my team growing up and oh wow we, we've all got put into rugby league from about four or five years old and just continue mm. along the path from there. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, being open about your father's struggles with his mental health and, mm. you know, growing up, um, you know, a, as a male with mental health issues, you know, that can be quite a stigma, you know, within society. Would you, would you have agreed? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely improved a lot um, in the last decade or so because mm. of the conversations that people are having around it and, and opening up about the challenges and, and how common it actually is. So I think that's very important mm. to continue doing, especially when it comes to athletes as well. I think it's quite, uh, quite prevalent in athletes too. Yeah. Um, and with males, it's, it's um, something that um, they're not quite comfortable talking about a lot of the time. So we, it's mm. definitely important. We keep changing that narrative. Yeah, absolutely. And having these conversations, the two of us is a way of us changing that narrative. So I'm really, again, exactly. ple pleased that we're, we're opening up the dialogue around this. Um, mentoring, I've always thought that's something that's important for, um, you know, young people, young professionals as they, as they grow their career. Um, do you have an example of someone that you would have considered to be a mentor for you sort of growing up? And, you know, I guess, um, you know, how has that helped you, if so, to be successful at the level that you're now operating at? By far the greatest mentor in my <clears throat> life was my mum. Um, mm. she, she coached me through... Um, every difficult time that I ever faced as a child. And mm. she always gave me the right advice I found. And it definitely helped me to, to get to where I am and um, to deal with uh, a lot of the adversity that I was able to face and always there to support mm. me. Yeah. Yeah, and that support's so important, isn't it? And, you know, we're not all be fortunate enough to have that. And, you know, therefore that can magnify some of the mental health challenges or anxieties around the sort of progressing through your, through your career. Yeah, for sure. That social health and that social connectedness, mm. having those mm. those close bonds and mm. um, strong family ties or or mm. friendships, mm. having that support around you is very important to maintain that yeah that, uh, mental well being. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, thank you for sharing that. I'm, just in terms of for for my interest and, and broader interest, your professional sporting career to date. You know, obviously, you know you're at the Eels at the moment. I know you've had a bit of a journey to sort of get to where you are today. So just, you know, briefly speaking, maybe a little bit of an overview of where you've come from um, career-wise to get to where you are now. 
Yeah, so I've played, <laughs> um, I think, around 130, 140 NRL games now over the course of this is my eighth season. I started in 2015 at the, at the Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, from there, I played uh, one game over in New Zealand for the New Zealand Warriors. <laughs> um, from there, progressed again uh, to play for two seasons for the Manly Seagulls. Um, in the second season there, I kind of had a, a bit a bit of a breakout year for myself in, in my career. I played every game. I was the top try scorer in the team. Yep. And from there, I, I earned a contract with, with Parramatta. And mm. that's when my uh, careers continued to kind of grow and, and blossom. Mm. In 2019, I got the forward of the year for Parramatta. And mm. I've continued to pretty much be a, a mainstay in the, in the starting team since then. And Mm. The, the teams also continue to grow and, and blossom into a finals contender every year, which is, um, yeah. which is very important and, and shows, uh, yeah, the hard work of everyone's really been, um, been a success. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Really interesting to sort of just get a high level sense of sort of where you've come from and congratulations mm. on that award. That would have been something that would have been, you know, a real source of pride for you in terms of recognition of your efforts. Yeah. Considering um, where I came from in the previous it was only a few years prior I was almost mm. considering um, just hanging up the boots because of the difficult times that I was going through in, yeah. in regards to, to footy. So mm. considering the journey that I kind of went through in just a few years time yep. to be going from playing reserve grade, not wanting to play football anymore to getting yeah. forward of the year in the team that mm. came, I think it was fourth or fifth that year. That was, um, that was uh, quite an achievement for myself and something I was quite proud of. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned, um, you know, some of your, your setbacks. I mean, one of the things that I'm really interested in exploring with professional athletes is a little bit of that darker side around, you know, setbacks, disappointments and what we learn from that, because we all celebrate the wins and the victories on the cups and the silverware and all that sort of stuff. So you touched on that a little bit. Are you able to just share a little bit more about what you see as some of the setbacks and disappointments and really interestingly, how you overcame that to get to the point of getting that accolade a couple of years later? Yeah, well, I, I see setbacks as the largest area for growth, really, and the, mm. the areas in which we um, are able to learn the most about ourselves and, and move forward and bounce back. Um, mm. Like I said, when I um, went over to New Zealand, I only played one game. Um, this was despite the fact that in my debut season, I had a, a really good year and there was a lot of promise surrounding my career, mm-hmm. a lot of potential. And um, uh, when I had that setback, that was um, quite devastating for me personally. Football was a, a very large, the main component of my life mm. at that time. And um, you can imagine being a 21-year-old kid. Yeah. I didn't quite have the mental skills necessary sure. to, to put up with uh, mm. um, those setbacks. So um, I definitely learned a lot about myself in, in the coming years up following that set, setback as I kind of uh, sat back and, and looked a bit, uh, looked back on um, what I could do to make sure things like that never happened again. And I, mm-hmm. um, it re- required a bit of um, introspection and uh, looking back on what I could do to improve my own situation and make sure things like that never happened again. And yeah. uh, luckily um, I was able to, to um, find a few strategies and incorporate that into my life and turn mm-hmm. things around. Yep. Yeah. And uh, again, really pleasing to hear that you've you've had the the courage and the insight to really look at some of those things and try to learn from that, because you'd probably agree a lot of us get really stuck in those patterns and it's really hard to come out of those. But it takes a lot of self-exploration, a lot of honesty you know, around what might be driving some of those behaviours. And uh, yeah, pleasing to hear that you've, you know, feel that you've been able to work through some of those things. Yeah, well just naturally as a, mm. as a human, everyone kind of by default gets set into those negative habits and negative ways because that's just how our psychology works, you know? So mm-hmm. it's something that mm. if you want to get out of those ruts, it's going to require a bit of work. And yeah, um, it's very yeah. important that you continue to work at those or else if you just let your mind get carried away, then mm. um, it's only going to be negative when you're yeah. facing those, um, those negative times. And we all know what happens using your words when we get carried away with those things around catastrophizing, you know, mm-hmm. grouping problems into one big basket and feeling really challenged, really difficult to be able to work through those. So I think we're in strong alignment around that. 
I'm just interesting to touch on, um, you know, a, a bit of an aspect of that in terms of coping with some of these things. And, you know, I think, um, you know, I've, I've mentioned to you previously, I'm no stranger to the fact that there was some time where you had some some media exposure, some press around some activities. Um, are you yeah. able to share a little bit about what that experience was like for you? <clears throat> and what's really important for me to hear is around what some of the learnings were for you around that and sort of how you came through that, if you're comfortable to share. Yeah, so I was um, I was on the front page of the Daily mm. Telegraph um, mm. for what appeared to be illegal activities. I was mm. uh, a photo of me was was leaked by a person who I, I trusted, and um, that was quite devastating. Um, mm. But uh, the things that I learned was that it was um, the social connections that I had that that really helped me to to get through that time and. I actually uh, it didn't rattle me as much as what I thought it would. Um, I'm kind of a person that doesn't really take note of um, other people's opinions of me as much. And I think that's mm. just uh, an innate um, element of, of, of my psychology, of my character, mm. just from how I've been brought up. And I'm, I'm very lucky, lucky that that's an element of, of what I'm like as a person, but some mm. people it might not be. So, yep. Um, I think, uh, yeah, that definitely helped me a lot. And having those connections around me uh, really helped me to to not go into that catastrophizing and um, feeling negative about myself. Instead, I just looked at what I'd done, accepted it, um, and then saw it as a, a, a challenge kind of to, to help move forward through my career and just mm. see what I could do beyond that point yep. to kind of make up for the, the negative things that I'd done to, to my team and to mm. my club. Mm, yeah. And again, thank you for sharing that. And it sounds like there was a lot of accountability taken around that and probably a good chance, you know, the language I use is around to reset in terms of your social structure, your social connections and, you know, in terms of trust and integrity and things like that and how that's positioned. Um, really interesting thing you said before is that you, you, one of the things you do well is that you don't take notice of what other people say about you. Obviously, I'm in Melbourne here being an AFL obsessed town every player's movement gets commented on and scrutinized, you know, on radio, on TV, et cetera. I just, if I was in your shoes, I'd find it difficult to sort of block out that noise because obviously where you are in New South Wales, it's a fishbowl around rugby league and your, in your behaviours and activities, I'm sure, and your teammates would be of great interest to a lot of people, even though it might be mundane for you. So with all of that pressure and with social media and all that sort of stuff happening, how do you practically do that? How do you not get affected by all of the, the opinions and analysis and comments and pictures and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, well, I think if you're, um, if you're more highly invested into getting involved in those types of things, it's, it's going to have an uh, emotional effect on what you're like, mm. uh, on, on how you feel, because a lot of it is going to be negative. A lot mm -hmm. of the press around people, like they, they chase that type of uh, story. And even if there is positive stories, it's going to be the negative ones that stick out more to you. Yeah. Because that's, once again, just how, how humans are psych psychologically. Mm. The, the mm. negative comments are are going to stick more in your mind and affect you more. Mm. So yeah. um, you got to have strategies around how you're going to deal with, with the negative press and mm. uh, comments on social media and things like that. So mm. um, once again, it's something you've got to work on. Um, I mm. personally don't watch any of the rugby league shows that mm -hmm. could potentially criticize me and things like that. I don't read the papers, any sporting mm. um, papers or anything like that. Um, I don't read any online articles. I don't look at any comments on social media. I don't, allow people to send me abusive messages or comment on my photos. Mm. Um, it's something that you've got to work on to make sure that you're not getting exposed to all of that negativity and that, yeah. um, because at the end of the day, those comments don't really matter anyways. They're not going to help you become a better player or a better person. Sure. And, um, you just pay attention to what your coaches are saying, your teammates, the ones, mm. your friends and family are around you. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm sort of picking up on, you know, things like discipline, focus, being really aware of that potentially encroaching into your life and um, really staying focused on what's important for you. I'm guessing, though, the challenge would be also managing perceptions from within the club and within teammates and things like that as well. So when this stuff happens and if there is a misunderstanding, do you find that even though you're dealing with it well, the club might have a bit of a different view and you're having to respond to sort of that group separately? 
Yeah, yeah. That that's something that sometimes the coach um, or other players might be um, more negatively impacted. But um, yeah. I've just learned that those aren't things that I can I can control. Yeah, I can only control how I respond to um, what's what's thrown at me. So um, I do everything I can to make sure that that negativity doesn't cross over into my mindset. That I just stay solely focused on what I need to do. And um, the only thing in my job is about going out onto a, onto the field for 80 minutes every week and performing in, in that period. And if anything doesn't help me achieve that, then there's no reason for me to pay attention to that. Yep. Um, so sometimes people who aren't as uh, switched on or as aware as what I am might be frustrated because it might seem like I don't care as much as they do about these things happening, but it's just not the case. It's just, I'm not paying attention to it because it's not going to help me. And I've explained that to some people um, and they're just going to have to accept that Um, they might operate differently to me, but it is what it is. That's the team dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I'm just hearing, you know, having that ability in the moment to be able to separate out what's productive thought patterns and what's unproductive or potentially unhealthy or create Mm -hmm. fears and anxieties. And I'm assuming from what you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly, that when you're on that field, it's important to harness the positive, those, you know, the positive aspects of that, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's about, it might not even be positive. Um, It's just not negative. Yeah, it, it could be neutral thinking on the field. It's just about mm. I have this job. What am I going to do to make sure that I achieve that that goal? Yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's what um, performance is all about on on the field, really. Yeah, great. Um, and thank you for sharing that. Um, just to sort of close this out, wanting to get a sense of current day Sean Lane. What do you do? Sort of what's part of your regime to really manage your mental health? You know, what do you do? What sort of advice can you give others who are looking at you, listening to this conversation and thinking, wow, my dream is to reach the level that Sean's at. I can understand there are some challenges around that to get to that point. Um, What are you doing currently in this sort of space for yourself? And are there any tips, I guess, that you can provide others just for them to start to be aware of if they're wanting to get to that point? Yeah, well, um, as I've grown uh, as a person, as I've developed more strategies, I think I've just become a lot more self-aware and uh, more understanding over how my mind operates, how what things are going to help me, what what patterns of thought aren't going to help me and getting on top of that. And one strategy I use to, to help me stay on top of my, my mind and my thoughts is meditation. Mm-hmm. Something that's very big for me. I do that every day. Mm. Um, and I, it's a noticeable difference when I do it compared to when I don't. Okay. Um, yeah. I, uh, ever since I've picked it up, I've felt a lot better. I, I do it before games to make sure that I'm focused. I was going to ask um, about that. Is that part of your pre-game routine that you spend yeah. some time to do that? Yep. So mm. I do that uh, before I go out for warm up. Helps me maintain my focus into, like, mm. like I said, what's important and what I don't need to pay attention to. Mm. Um, I, I like to journal as well. Yep. Helps me capture my thoughts on a page. Beautiful. Um, helps yeah. me gain awareness over what I'm thinking and and, mm-hmm. and what's best for me as well. Mm. Um, yeah, that's just kind of the strategies that I use. I also obviously can't um understate the importance of maintaining a a good social network so i always like to Mm. go out um with my friends and make time for them and and i always go see my family um Mm. every wednesday night we have our family dinner so we're maintaining contact there and maintain some social bonds and Mm. um just other elements of physical health you know obviously i exercise a lot as as part of uh, being a professional athlete and eating well and Mm. Um, just getting out, getting some sunlight, going for swims and walks and just things like that, not spending too much time on social media and other mm. things that can be adverse to your mental health. Yeah, great. And there's some really good tips there. and You've covered a whole lot of areas and I'm a big fan of the meditation for clients because it's another version of a grounding technique to be able to really settle and connect in with your surroundings and really focus on what's important. So, you know, I'm pleased to hear that. And obviously the journaling is a great way to be able to connect in with your feelings and emotions at any moment. So again, really pleased to hear that you're an advocate for that because we are aligned in our thoughts there. Um, 
Sean, thank you. Again, just a really interesting overview of some of your thinking around the mental health space and a little bit of an insight into your career to date. So I want to thank you very much for making the time to uh, meet with me today, especially, you know, less than uh, 24 hours after being out on the field. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it and look forward to continuing our conversations. Yeah, of course. Me too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Okay.